Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson in this Tosca automation course. Today we are going to learn about how you can generate random values and enter into your test steps in Tosca. Now we have already seen how you can enter input values into your test cases. But these are all uh, fixed values which you are entering, right? Static data. But what if you want to make your test more dynamic, right? So every time you run, there is a, a different value you are entering into the test case, right? And that is where Tosca provides you a way to generate random values, be it a integer, a number, or a string, right? So let's see what are the different ways of generating random values for your test cases in Tosca. So the first way is uh, generating the random integer values, right? So these are random numbers which can be generated by Tosca and you can enter these numbers uh, in any field which accepts some numerical data, okay? Now there are two ways of doing it. One is generate an integer without limits, right? So here you can use an expression like this. So we are going to see how and where you'll be using that, right? So you have to use R and D and then uh, in square brackets, you have to enter the length of a random number, right? So that could be either 10, 9 or 50, 100, whatever you want to have the length of your number, right? So this will generate a random number of that particular length, which is defined by you, okay? The other way of doing it is generating a integer within a certain range, right? So if you want to generate a number between a thousand or and a 10,000, right? Then you have to define the expression like RND, then you have to define the lower limit and then the upper limit. So what Tosca will do, it will generate a random number between this lower limit and upper limit. Okay, so this is the range between which these numbers will be generated. So these are the two ways of generating random numbers in Tosca. And then you can also generate numbers with decimal places. Okay, so here you have to define the number length and the expression would be RND decimal and in square brackets, you have to put the length of random number, okay? So what would be the length of random number? And then you have to also mention the decimal places. So what number of decimal places you want your number to be, right? So it could be two, it could be three, it could be four or any particular decimal places. So Tosca is going to generate a number with that number of decimal places. Next you can also generate a number with decimal places within a certain range, okay? So you have to uh, follow this expression, RND decimal. Here you need to mention the decimal places and then the lower limit and upper limit, okay? So Tosca is going to generate a number with certain decimal places between a certain range, okay? So that's how you can generate a random number with decimals. Now the next thing uh, is the random strings. So this random string could be a mix of random numbers and letters, and this will be generated by Tosca, okay? So you can generate a random string. Uh, the expression is random text, and in square bracket, you need to define the desired string length, and it will going to generate the random text with this particular length, okay? So these are all the ways how you can generate different numbers, number with decimals or uh, strings, right? So there are a couple of other options as well. Like you can generate um, a string with a timestamp, right? But um, these are generally used in your test cases, okay? So now let's see how this could be useful in a scenario where you can generate this random data and then insert it into your test case. So I'm in my workspace in Tosca Commander where I'm going to add another scenario where we could use the random values, right, uh, provided by Tosca. So let's see, we are going to pick up uh, application with a particular scenario. 
so this would be our application which is a register page right so here the user can come in and register its account in this particular application right? so he has to enter the first name last name email telephone password confirm password and then some um, options which he needs to select and then click on continue to register an account on this particular application okay so we are going to automate this using tosca and we'll see how and where we can use the random value generation feature provided by tosca so first of all uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a new test case folder right for our application i'm going to call it tutorial ninja that's the application name so i will keep it that okay and then here we need to again um, create our test cases or we can create some other subfolders but for now let's create our test cases okay so the first test case right uh, would be for uh, registering an application right or we have to first open the application as well which is a prerequisite so let's do that okay so this is my first test case open application and then i can add another test case and i will say register account okay and this is my second test case now for open application i need some test steps and for that i can use some default module right the same way we have used it in our other application okay now in order to uh, get a standard module right uh, one way is you can go and search it in your standard modules right or the other way around is just go to your test case and press ctrl t right so when you press ctrl t it will open a window where all the different modules present in this workspace will be displayed and here you can search your module which you want to include in your test case or test steps right now i need something called open url okay so this is the open url module right and this will allow me to open an application on the browser right so let's grab the url here and i'll put the value as it is in the value right the action mode would be input the data type is still string right so that will open a url in a specific browser now coming to our this particular application we also need a test configuration parameter right so let's go ahead and add it we can add it from here uh, from the test case folder right so go here and you will see test create test configuration parameter we have already seen this so we'll select browser and in the browser the chrome browser so that the application opens in this particular browser okay so the initial steps are now done and let's go to register account where we will again create a module for our registration page right let's create a new module here right so let's first create a new module folder so right click and select create folder here i'm going to enter some name right it could be anything but i would just enter the application name here okay now we need to add different modules for this application and the best way to do it is directly scan the application right the page which you are trying to automate so right click and go to scan application there we have to select our application which we want to scan okay so i'll go to this and click on scan now it will ask me to click on controls in my application to basically add those controls right so let me click on first name last name email telephone password the confirm password the subscribe button the privacy policy checkbox and the continue button okay so all of these controls 
I want to add into my module. Okay. So click on save and click on close. So that is basically going to add all the controls in this particular module, which is register account. Okay. Now, what we want to do is let's drag it here so that we can see both the test cases and modules, right? And I want to add this module, right? So either you can again press Control T and search for this, or you can directly drag and drop into this particular test step. Okay. So this will add this module and all the controls into this particular test case as different test steps. Okay. And as you can see, it has got different controls and we have to enter different values, right? Now the straightforward way, uh, which we have already seen is to directly enter different values into these fields, right? And it would work as usual. So I can enter a name, first name, last name, email, telephone, password, right? But then uh, we are trying to learn how we can generate random values for strings or numbers in Tosca, okay? so that uh, we can make our test case more dynamic, okay? So um, let's see how we can generate the random string, okay? So you need to follow the expression here. In the value, you need to type this curly braces and then you need to type random, okay? And it will be popped up, you will see random text. So either you type it or select it from the options and then square bracket, okay? And you need to enter some length here. So let me enter five, okay? And close the curly braces, that's it. When you press enter, you will see uh, this highlighted uh, value, which is the random text and the length is five, okay? Similarly, I can do it for last name. So I'll say random, right? text and in square bracket again five okay and press enter so you can see both of these values are now random values which will be generated by tosca now if you want to verify uh, what tosca is actually doing for these values right whether it is generating random uh, values or not that also you can do so go here right click and then there is an option called translate value Okay, so click on that and you should see a translation, right, for this particular expression. So it will show you the value which it is printing or it is generating and using it for this particular field, okay. Uh, it's some random value um, as we have put random text, right? So it's a combination of um, text and numbers, okay. So it is generating this particular value. Now, similarly for this, you can also translate the value and it will show you a random value, okay? So let's enter some um, value in this email field, okay? So test at uh, test at qscript.com. This is my email, right? Uh, in telephone, Let's see how we can use the random number, okay? So how you can generate a random number and put in this telephone field. So for that, again, um, start with curly braces and then type RND, okay? So that's the expression for random number. After this, either you can um, do a range, right? Or you can directly put the number of digits you want, okay? So the digits, number of digits for telephone is generally 10. So I'll keep it as 10 and then hit enter and you will see the expression is converted, right? Again, if you want to see what is the value, just click on translate value and you will see some random number being generated. Okay. Now password, I will put some password here, okay and here as well the confirm password now later i will show you also how you can generate random passwords right and you can also use it in confirm password but for that we need to use a different concept right so i'll take it up 
in some of the future sessions. Now for this radio button, we have to click on it, right? And checkbox, we need to select true or false. And then we need to click on the OK button, right? So these are all the values or all the actions which we want to perform on all these different controls. Um, so now let's go ahead and let's see if we are able to see all these random values which we have generated are being entered into the application when we'll run this particular application, okay? So let's go ahead and close this existing browser and let's run this from our test case folder, okay? So go to run in Scratchbook and it should open a browser with the application and it will enter all the values, okay? So as you can see, it has entered some random uh, values for first name, for last name, and for telephone, right? So these are the random numbers and random strings which we have generated are being entered into these fields, right? Now, there is some failure currently, right? And uh, that's because it is not able to click on a particular control, right? And the thing it is complaining is there is more than one control found for action one, okay? So we know the problem is with the radio button, right? So there are more than one control with the same properties. Now, obviously, um, the way to fix this is to select some other property value, right? But this is part of our module, right? Um, and we need to actually rescan the module and we need to change this particular property value for this control. So that's the solution for this kind of issues which will come across every application, right? So there could be some common controls which have some same values and these are not uh, uniquely identified by Tosca, right? So in that, you need to intervene and you need to change that control property value. Now I'm going to take this up in the next session where I will show you how you can rescan your module, right? Um, from the application and pull the different values or change the values or properties of a particular control which are not unique okay so we'll see this in our next session